Welcome back. We're going to continue our discussion of receivables, but now we're going to move to talking about notes receivables and talking about how interest is computed and accrued on those. So if you remember back in chapter three, we had a brief lesson about interest and notes receivable and how that's accrued in the adjusting entry. So we've already talked about this a little bit, but we are going to go into a little bit more detail now. Now, we talked about this again earlier in Objective 1, a promissory note. Typically, that's a more formal written contract that specifies how much has to be paid back, what the interest associated is, and um, when it has to be paid back, what the maturity date is. So we defined these earlier, but just to redefine them again, the maker of the note is also called the debtor, or this is the person that has that owes the money this is the person that has the debt then the payee of the note or the creditor is the one who is receiving the payment is the one who loaned the money the lender so the maker or the debtor is the borrower the payee or the creditor is the lender so in this chapter we are going to be the lender the payee the creditor will be loaning money to customers or um another maybe a subsidiary company when we get to chapter 11 and 12 we'll look at it from the perspective of the borrower or the maker or the debtor so a couple of terms that we need to learn the principal and notice that's principal with an al not principal with an le the principal is the amount of money that is borrowed um, so without any interest accrued on it then interest is accrued on top of it to the lender this interest is revenue and we know that interest revenue remember in our multi-step income statement we learned in chapter five interest revenue is going to be be in that other section down at the bottom like that sales discounts forfeited when we are the borrower or the debtor like in chapters 11 and 12 then we'll have interest expense so the interest period is the time over which interest is computed this may be the entire length of the loan or it may be a shorter period so if a if less time has passed, if it's a, let's say, 12-month loan, but only three months have passed, then the interest period is just three months. So the interest rate, for our purposes, the interest rates will always be expressed in terms of a year. They're not always in real life, but 90 eight percent of the time they are expressed in terms of a year and so for our purposes they will always be expressed in terms of a year the maturity date is the date when the final payment is made so we know that in real life when we borrow money we usually have to make monthly payments that include some principal and some interest the date that you make the last payment you pay off the entire loan that's the maturity date now, we'll get to that scenario when we get to chapter 12, but for right now, we're not going to be working in a world where we're making monthly payments or our debtors are making monthly payments to us. In order to keep the calculations a little bit simpler, we'll be working in a world where we're going to loan a, someone some money for a set period of time and they're going to pay us back in one lump sum. So let's say that we own loan a... Uh, subsidiary company a thousand dollars and they say you can pay us back in a year they're not going to make monthly payments in one year they're going to pay us the thousand dollars back plus all of the interest so that amount that they pay us back the principal plus all of the interest that's called the maturity value and that's the total amount that is paid back over the life of the loan so when we have a note receivable, there's really a three-step process to recording it. On the date the loan is made, we record the amount of the loan. This is for the principal only. We are only recording the principal. Then periodically, meaning usually at the end of every quarter or whenever we're getting ready to do financial statements, definitely at the end of the year, we will do an adjusting entry like we learned back in Chapter 3 to accrue the interest that has been incurred thus far. We haven't received it yet, but we have earned it, so we're going to go ahead and record it. And then on the maturity date, we will record the collection of the principal and the collection of the interest.
So here we lend Lauren Holland a thousand dollars, and so on the day that we lend her the money, we will debit notes receivable, and we will credit cash. Now notice we are just crediting it, crediting it for the thousand dollars. In other words, for the principal only. We do not record the interest up front. Okay. Also, I want to point out that in this case, since this is a one-year loan, this would be a current asset. If it was a three-year loan or even a two-year loan or even an 18-month loan, it would be a long-term asset. But 12 months or less would be a current asset. So this notes receivable here would show up in our current asset section. Sorry. To calculate the amount of interest, we're going to say the principal, which was $1,000. We're going to multiply it by the interest rate, which remember was 6%, to con so to convert that to a decimal, we'll move it two places to the left, so 0 0.06, and then we multiply it by the amount of time. Now, here's where this gets a little different. So first of all, because this interest rate is an annual interest rate, time must be expressed in terms of a year. Okay, always in terms of a year. Also, we are just computing how much interest has accrued since the loan began, not for the entire loan period. So if we were computing for the entire loan period, we would just plug a one in here. But we're not going to be doing that. So we loaned the money to Lauren on September 30th. On December 31st, when we do those adjusting entries, we're going to have to go in and accrue the interest that we have earned thus far. So since September 30th, only three months have passed. Okay, so don't be afraid to use your fingers when you're counting this out. I know that we've been told never count on your fingers, but trust me, count on your fingers. So we loan the money to Lauren on September 30th. So you count, start counting interest the next day, which was October 1st. So Lauren has had the loan outstanding for all of October, all of November, all of December. Remember, it's December 31st. So she's had the loan outstanding for three months. Now, I don't want to plug a three in here because that will calculate three years worth of interest. I want to plug three twelfths. In other words, one fourth of a year. So if I multiply that out, 1,000 times 0 0.06 times 3 twelfths, I believe I get $15. So as of December 31st, I have earned $15 of interest. I have not received it yet, but I have earned it. Think of it this way. If Lauren were to walk into our business today, December 31st, and say, hey, I came into some money, I want to pay my loan off early, we would say, great, you owe this $1,000 plus $15 of interest. So this is how much has accrued thus far. So again, here we are, December 31st, we did our calculation, our interest should be $15. So this is interest that I have earned. Anytime I've earned it, that would be interest revenue. And remember, revenues are always, always, always credited. I haven't received this interest yet, but I'm expecting to receive it in the future. I'm expecting to receive it on September 30th of next year. So I will debit interest receivable and credit interest revenue for the $15 that Lauren owes me so far. So when I get down here to September 30th of 2026, Let's, I'm going to go ahead and draw some T accounts over here. I have my note receivable T account that has a debit balance of 1000 I have my interest receivable T account that has a debit balance of 15 And I have interest revenue that has a credit balance of 15 so here it is. Now pretend that it is September 30th of next year. Lauren is going to pay us back. We know that she owes us $15 for the first three months of interest. Now we need to calculate how much interest she owes us since January 1. So from January 1 to September 30th. So that's nine months of interest. So 1,000 times 6% are 
times nine twelfths is forty-five dollars. So she, we have earned another forty-five dollars of interest on this loan. So in total, Lauren will have to pay us sixty dollars of interest. Okay. So the first fifteen was for last year's interest, and then the next nine months came out to forty-five. So on the maturity date, Lauren is going to come in and pay us all of the principal plus all $60 that she owes us. So she's going to write us a check for $1,060. We're going to do a journal entry to debit cash for $1,060. Now I wanna go back up here and draw my T accounts up here again. So remember I have note receivable that has a debit balance of 1,000. I have interest receivable that has a debit balance of 15, and I have interest revenue that has a credit balance of 15. So Lauren is going to hand me a check for $1,060. When Lauren hands me a check, I debit cash for $1,060. Now I'm going to have lots of credits to show what this was for. So Lauren has now paid off her note receivable, so I'm going to credit the asset note receivable to take it off my books. I'm gonna zero out those T accounts. She doesn't owe me for the note. But she also paid me $60 in interest. Now, I know that I previously recorded interest receivable of $15, so I want to credit interest receivable. Now, it would be tempting to credit interest receivable for $60, but since interest receivable only has a debit balance of 15, I don't want to credit it for 60. I want to zero it out but I don't want to credit it for 60. If I credit it for 60, it will mean I have a credit balance of $45 in that account. It'll look like Lauren paid me too much interest. She didn't pay me too much interest. She paid me exactly enough. So I only want to credit interest receivable for 15 so that I've zeroed that out. So I know that debits have to equal credits. I need another $45 credit here. That has to be to the interest revenue account. So interest revenue is currently only at $15. It shows I only have earned $15 of interest, but really I've earned 60. So I want to credit it for another 45 to show that I have really earned $60 of interest. So I'm going to erase this real quick here so we can. And then, of course, in our multi-step income statement, we know that this interest revenue will show up in the other revenue section because interest revenue is always an other amount. Okay. Now, I do want to point out this 1060 that Lauren paid us, this is, again, what we call the maturity value. And the September 30 of 2026 of next year, this is the maturity date. Okay.